Welcome back. We were discussing uh, nebulization, in which we said the nebulizer was is actually a gadget that breaks down suspension and solution into aerosol droplets that can easily be dissolved and taken up through the process known as nebulization using a gadget that is referred to as a nebulizer. So what are those aerosols? So aerosol medications can be delivered directly to the bloodstream through the lungs without the complication of, uh, without the complication of and IV such as pain and injection at the site. So this is the type of drug administration which could serve the same function as that of IV and IM, okay? That will save patients in a lot of conditions such as, in, in a lot of uh, discomfort such as that which comes about due to injection. This technique is used mostly for dosing medication for lung conditions such as asthma, which is one of the commonest uh, conditions which benefits from this mode of drug delivery. Aerosol therapy is a technique of administering medication direct into the airway and the lungs. An aerosol is a suspension of liquid or solid particles usually administered by a medical device referred to as an inhaler or a nebulizer. A medical device is used to convert the medication into fine aerosol particles that can be inhaled or propelled directly into the airway reaching the lungs. Okay. Bronchodilators and corticosteroids are the most commonly administered drugs using this way. The primary use of aerosol therapy is treatment of respiratory disorders that include obstructive pulmonary conditions, which we've already discussed, and among them is asthma. We also talked about COPDs, cystic fibrosis, including cystic fibrosis, pulmonary arterial hypertension, and infectious pulmonary diseases can also benefit from this for uh, mode of uh, drug administration. Okay. With the advent of micro uh, molecular uh, micro molecular medication, aerosol therapy is being investigated for use in non respiratory system systemic diseases. Inhalation therapy can be convenient alternative to injections for chronic conditions that improve discomfort. Okay, advancement in previous techniques, advancement in aerosol, uh, in aerosol delivery system was enabled better efficiency and accuracy in delivery medications directly into the lungs where they are rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream. As these big medications which would need which one would need injections uh, and IM, uh, administration of drugs, intramuscular administration of drugs, could be averted by trying to use this uh, technique. So currently people are studying the possibility of using this type of technique in some of these uh, medications that need IM, uh, IM, administration of drugs such as diabetes and which are lifelong. So like in diabetes, one will be given a, a prescription, which is a lifelong administration of IM uh, administration of drugs. So aerosol therapy comes in as a better way of administering drugs, which does not cause that inconvenience or that discomfort. So it is being studied in conditions such as uh, diabetes, in pain relief, like we know, in conditions such as cancer, there is a lot of pain that is involved. So it is uh, also considered in those conditions where one can just be given these aerosol droplets, inhale them, and have some relief of pain. Thyroid disorders as well as uh, genetic diseases. There are benefits include direct delivery to the treatment site, faster onset of action, lower requirement of dosage, and reduced systemic adverse effects. It also improves 
the patient's adherence to medication since it is non-invasive. Okay, it is just the breathing in of these drugs. So a patient is likely to adhere to the course as compared to the course that has to do with injections. Mode of aerosol drug delivery include these three types. Number one, metered dose inhalers. A metered dose inhaler is an, a handheld device that uses a pressurized metal canister with a metering valve to deliver precise doses of medication. The canister is encased in a plastic sleeve uh, with, a mouthpiece, with a mouthpiece to use for inhalation. So this is a picture of this metered dose inhaler. A canister will, come, will, have, a, a, will have the following uh, substances in, which would, would be a medication, surfactant, surfactant or propellant. Okay, medication, which is a solution uh, that is needed. Which could be, uh, yeah, which is uh, the, in solution form, delivering the medication that is needed for a given condition. But surfactant also will be in combination so that it reduces the surface area, I mean, the surface tension in the lung tissues, propellant to propel the particles in forward. So, this is the metered dose inhaler in which the patient can just push this button up here so that a metered uh, so that a given dose can be pushed into the patient's uh, uh, system so that the patient can inhale it. It has advantages in that it is portable and can deliver multiple doses in that a person can press as many times as they want or as many times as it prescribed. Low risk of bacterial infection. Disadvantages, need for actuation. In that every time that you want to take, you need to actuate it, you need to press so that uh, it, it gets in motion. Disposition of drug, of the, med of, the, of the medication in the mouth and the throat. Possible inflammability and pressurized propel prop propellant, okay? Cannot be used by people with sensitivity or cardiotoxicity to Propellant. It also needs some accessory devices in which inhalation through accessory devices enhance the act action of the metered dose inhalers. And these will include uh, devices such as accessory devices such as the spacers, okay, and uh, the open tube spacers. So this is just a picture which is showing us the spacer. So this is the spacer here. This is our inhaler in the spacer so it has to be uh, connected to the spacer so that it enhances its delivery activity, okay? Those was what are known as valve holding chambers, all these are accessories. The advantage of adding those accessories is that they will enhance drug delivery, remove the need for coordination, okay? Removes the need for coordination of inhalation with the actuation. Prevents exhalation of air into the device and reduce, redu, uh, uh, reduces drug disposition in the mouth and the throat. At the end of the day, the disadvantage is that it becomes bulky in size and difficult to move around with. Possible bacterial contamination may result if not regularly cleaned. Static electricity may reduce drug delivered it to the lungs. So it has the advantages and the disadvantages. The second type in which aerosol can be delivered is by dry powder inhalers. Dry powder inhalers are devices that contain medication in the form of minute particles such as a capsule or blister. Okay. The blister capsule is punctured into the inhaling a medication through the mouthpiece. Dry powder inhalers do not use any propellant and are actuated by the patient's breathing. So these are the types of dry powder inhalers. Okay, as we can see from the pictures, they are 
these are different uh, types. We have single dose, multi dose, and another type of multi dose. Advantages: they are portable. They do not need propellants. They don't need to be pushed for anything to add it for 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 propulsion of the contents to occur. No need for space as, as they use the patient's breath for propulsion to occur. So no need for the propulsion, propulsion to come from, from the gadget. No need of spacers actuated by breath. So no need for coordination. Disadvantages, they require good inhalation for it. So are not appropriate for patients with acute asthma attacks or children with reduced lung function. In asthma, there is reduction of the rumen, so meaning breathing in is a problem. So a patient who has asthma cannot use this, which is dependent on the, on the patient's breath to be actuated. It cannot work. You use the other one, which is supposed to, which is propelled by uh, the gadget. It would work for the asthmatics because it, it will propel the medication direct on the smooth muscles and they start the action. So this one cannot work on asthmatics. Drug disposition on the throat, humidity may cause the powder to clamp and they prevent the disposal, okay? Then the third type is the use of nebulizers, which we've already discussed, but just in a nutshell, they are electrical devices that transform drug solutions into breathable aerosol particles, the process known as nebulization. Okay, which is converting medicine into fine inhalable mist. Okay, nebulizers are useful for administering inhalation medication to patients who are too ill or too young to use other in, in, uh, inhaling devices. Can be used also in the mouth as, as uh, with a mouthpiece or a mask, as we can see from the picture here. Here you can use a nebulizer like that. Okay, there are three types of nebulizers. Pneumatic jet nebulizer, which, use com which uses compressed gas to nebulize the solution. The powered compressor sends pressurized air or oxygen through the tubing into the cup, liquid medication, aeros aerosolizing uh, the, this medication. And as we can see in the picture on the right, this is what it does. It aerosolizes this medication and it turns them into mist and pushes them into the, uh, the desired, uh, into the lung tissue so that they can be appreciated and they can work there direct on the site where they're supposed to work using compressed gas. Ultrasonic nebulizer, which is a compact single unit that uses high frequency vibrations to nebulize medications. Aerosol particles may be slightly larger than those produced by jet nebulizers, and ultrasonic nebulizers are not efficient for nebulizing such patients. So, this is a picture of this ultrasonic nebulizer. Okay, so it releases nebulized. Uh, aerosol droplets like that, so a patient will just connect to the mask there and breathe in. Then there is what is referred to as a mesh nebulizer, which are portable battery operated devices that use a very fine mesh to break up the solution into aerosol particles. Mesh nebulizers are the latest products and produce the finest aerosol droplets, but are also most expensive. That is their disadvantage, okay? Its advantages are that it is useful for patients who cannot use other types of inhalation devices. It can administer large doses of medicine and patient coordination is not required. Disadvantages, it is expensive. It is harder to carry, takes longer to set up and administer the medication. Jet nebulizers need the compressed gas source, okay? So these are just examples of this nebulizing, the, the, the process of the gadgets, the devices that can be used in the nebulization process. So this is a 
newer and better form of uh, drug administration, which can be done at the patient's convenience and in the comfort of the patient. While they are in that position, relaxed and attending to other things, they can still have their drugs administered. Thank you so much for your attention.